Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm at a little wooded area here, not too far from my house, and I thought we would try to do a scene like this, where you have a lot of trees and some light coming through and try to make it a little artistic. So I'm outside painting, it's a nice day. First thing I'm gonna do is I have a kind of a dirty brush. My water is kind of dirty, which is fine. Um, I've got kind of a yellowy, greenish color. And I'm just kind of wetting in a uh, sort of vertical method since we're not really doing any sky. I just want to put a background tint of where maybe some shrubbery bushes will be uh, using a little yellow ochre and some raw sienna. I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue here now and I'm going to, again, I'm creating sort of the backdrop for ultimately what will be the trees. And I'm coming in with some more yellow ochre and some little cad yellow hue. Just want to create some layers just to get some, some depth in there. Okay, so now I'm going to take my rigger brush with just some burnt umber, a little bit of Payne's Gray on it, and I'm just going to vertically put in some tree trunks. Lighter for the ones more distant in the back. Just sort of some up and down basic strokes until the brush gets cleaned off while the paper is still wet, of course. And just kind of some squiggles and wiggles here just for some branches coming off of these trunks. Doesn't have to be anything super precise. Same thing, just putting in some squiggles. Looks a little haphazard at the moment, but eventually it'll make sense. You notice we got some color variety in the background. Now I'm taking some cad yellow hue, some yellow ochre, nice and bright colors, and I'm just sort of almost dry brushing in some foreground areas. And then taking the same color and sort of doing that with the background. Spray a little water to keep it open. I've left open the center area for some light. And now I'm just kind of over brushing some green over that bright yellow. We get a combination of some greens and yellows and stay within that same family of colors. Now I just took my toothbrush and I just flicked some water onto the bottom. I kind of want to get that to run a little bit, let the water do some, some magic. You can see how I've splashed it in there just to get some randomness, to get some textures. And now I'm going to come back with darker brown and put in some more, some closer trunks. Interesting thing about doing this is it's almost like every painting is sort of experimental and you keep moving forward, you keep learning. Um, and that's what my journey is about here. I had someone leave a comment. Uh, it was constructive criticism, of course. I, I, I really need that. Um, I, I like when people like my paintings, of course. But uh, if someone says, hey, a reflection should be a little lighter so they don't look like they're all aligned or something along those ideas, uh, any of that stuff, if you're an experienced artist and you see something, don't be afraid to put that in the comment area. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Um, if you like it, of course, I, I always enjoy people liking my paintings. 
Um, but this is my journey that I'm on. I've, I've started this almost three years ago, painting just about every day. And my object is to get better and sort of document this on YouTube. We have a group in uh, Facebook uh, of this sort of Ron Ranson uh, group, uh, but it's more based along the fast and loose, big brush, painting, wet and the wet. So if you're interested in that and you are an artist and you want to come join us, uh, come and, and uh, answer the questions so we know you're serious about joining and uh, we'd love to have you. Um, and it's all about everyone learning this technique. And that's what I'm doing. It's a lot of learning as I go. There's a lot of great people out there. Dave Usher, Stephen Cronin, look these people up. Um, they've been on here for years and years and they're in our group. Um, and so everybody's learning. Now I'm doing some larger tree trunks. I've now back to the hake again. And I am just putting in some, some ultramarine blue burnt umber and uh, some uh, Payne's Gray. And I'm just putting in some larger trunks there. Now these are the most foreground trunks that we have in the painting. So everything looks layered and pushed back. And I'm going to take my card and I'm going to scrape off and just create some texture on these trees. I think most artists are kind of a work in progress. I think once you say, I have it down, and you do something a certain way, and you're not learning anymore, I think uh, it would be boring. I'm just touching up now that the scraping was a little, you know, too much. So just to add a little more color to the trunk, um, I'll leave some of that scraping visible. And you can see how we have the light in the center compared to that first uh, video in the beginning showing the woods. It's probably not quite as yellow of the, uh, of the, as this, but we never want to copy the picture. We want sort of an artistic flair. So we're trying to keep the color scheme similar so it's not all over the board. If you want to, you can put a figure in, uh, in the area. I'm, I don't think I will. And I just did a little more scraping. Just till I'm happy with it. I want the trees to have a sort of feel, a realistic feel to them. And we're just going to put, just to anchor the trees to the ground, we're going to dab in a little, a little sort of grassiness area. If that's a word. Just the randomness of the bristles of the hake. This is the uh, medium hake now. And I'm coming back with in some, just some cad yellow hue. This is, by the way, 90 pound, 11 by 14, Studio Fabriano. And I'm using mostly Cotman colors. Typically I use mostly Cotman colors. They're student grade, but they're adequate for doing uh, landscapes such as this. Just going to put in some more branches to stand out a little bit more. Whenever I paint these, I think to myself, is this something somebody would want to hang on their wall? It's kind of like my just my thought process. Is it is it something someone would hang somewhere in maybe their house? I'm 
and this one by the time this goes up it should be in my eBay store I don't sell my paintings for a lot there's a lot of talk about what you should should sell your paintings for I really just want to I want people to this to people to see this and find the enjoyment that I found that's like goal number one sort of pay it forward um, I sell my paintings because I enjoy the idea of people having them in their home and I can use that to buy more supplies tubes of paint are like five bucks if you get them on sale up to ten dollars twelve dollars for some different quality paints brushes and of course paper uh, so that's mainly what I use that for so it's nice to be able to recoup that and keep going with 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 uh, making more videos and hopefully down the road maybe five ten years from now I'll be able to uh, maybe make a full-time thing out of this and teaching people locally I just sprayed a little bit of water on, the, <clears throat> on there just to kind of keep it open a little bit. Now I'm drying, I'm really drying the bristles of the brush. Now we're going to do some leaves. The drier you make your brush, the smaller the leaves will be. So if you want fine leaves, really dry and go with neat paint. If you want larger leaves, go with a wetter brush. So now I'm dabbing in some cad yellow hue. Again, this is to keep the brightness in the painting. We've got some green in the background, so we'll see that. You'll have your, some of your greens, but it's a very bright scene. And of course, the harder you push the brush and the more you're going to make the bristles go sideways and make more, uh, as you press on the paper, you're going to really mash in and make those leaves larger too. Now I'm just coming back in with just some darker little yellow mixed with a little blue just go a little greener and sort of darken up where leaves might be darker within more shadowy areas and I'll come back and I'll use that same drying brush to make some grass blades I like to have them sticking out into the white area so they stand out for some nice counter change Just go a little darker progressively, add a little Payne's gray. And if you're following this or you're trying this, to, you know, put your trees in sort of random. You see I have sort of three on one side, two on the other, so it doesn't look so mirror imagey. Just giving that a little spray and we'll just texturize that a little bit just by pressing a little paper towel lifts a little paint to create if you have a little texture to your paper towel um, it creates textures use a lot of little material anything you find laying around that has a little texture to it you can make that a tool for your painting So we're getting near the end here. I think we have turned out a nice piece. I always appreciate your comments, you subscribing. And I do hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed painting it.
I'm scratching in some sticks and things. Just a little random dark in shadows to make things pop a little bit with the rigger brush. And a little spray, just putting a little bit more texture into that tree. So that's about it. Again, I hope you enjoyed this. And we'll zoom in and we'll... take a closer look. And here is the finished piece. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. So you can see the nice leaves. You can see the things in the background, the layers, the brightness in the center, and a lot of the textures that were achieved in the foreground grass area. Thanks for watching, everybody.